During my time here, the field trips have definitely been the highlight. It's been an amazing experience to see both local projects around us and something as great as the Brazilian Amazon. And Lancaster is extremely well positioned, so we've got the Lake District and the Yorkshire Dales just on the doorstep. We've got Morecambe Bay and the Irish Sea Coast just the other way. So we can do an awful lot just around Lancaster. But the subjects we teach are also global subjects and sometimes there's real value in putting what we do in Lancaster in a broader perspective. Doing field trips you really get to learn some different skills and not only learn them but applying them which are really important. If we talk to employers then practical skills in ecology, in identification, in habitat analysis are really important in terms of employability. Oh, it's invaluable, I've already added it to my CV that I've been uh, conducting research in you know, a, different, a different part of the world. So Doniana is uh, a really important migration hotspot for bird migration from Africa to Northern Europe and we go there in spring so it's a time when there are a huge range of bird species passing through so the students get to see a whole range of migratory species as well as some of the, the really high profile resident species like the Spanish Imperial Eagle. My colleague, Rosa Menendez, is an insect ecologist and she takes the insect day on Doniana. So one of the things we see in Doniana are dung beetles, the ones that actually roll dung into balls and then bury it to feed their young. And New York is a place that everyone knows before they go there. So we're trying to show them a different New York. So the first day we went took a ferry to uh, the Statue of Liberty, Staten Island and uh, the Immigration Museum at Ellis Island and got a sense of what the history of New York was like and how the immigrants um, kind of shaped how the city is today. So we look at Ellis Islands, we look at the people coming in there and then we follow them to some extent, go to places, the Tenement Museum for example, one of the early settlement places for people coming in and we learn how, how they're treated and how they're sort of filtered into rich people and poor people get very different treatments already on Ellis Island. We're given a kind of subway line to follow and we get out at each subway stop and look around and kind of see what the area is like, write our notes, our feelings and saw how the city changed. You know, you've got dilapidated housing on one block and then you walk a block further and it might be, you know, 30 seconds extra walk but then you've got, you know, a yoga place and coffee shops and all these kind of really high-end places and it, it really strikes home when you see it for yourself and you, you, don't, you don't expect it to be that obvious. Another day we go to different activist organisations who are upset about some inequality and try to do something about it as a way of seeing the inequality in a sense, right? Because these people can tell us about it and show us what, what's going on. You know, waking up um, from your cabins and seeing the rainforest around you and going along the Amazon River was just incredible. We started to engage with the locals on the boats as well. It wasn't just tourists, I think we were the only tourists on the boat. Um, so it was really useful to start to adapt to the environment and Luke and the other lecturers were translating for us in Portuguese so we were really getting an insight to their lives and why they were travelling on the boat. During this trip in the Amazon we're exploring the social and environmental dimensions and we start off in cities um, really because the Amazon is mostly urbanised and uh, th there's a big poverty issue in Amazonian cities, many people are very marginalised and poor. The first half of the trip really was human geography based but the second half of the trip when we got really quite deep into the Amazon, to the rainforest, it was a it's a time for us as geography students to start developing our ecological skills which is something you wouldn't get the opportunity to otherwise. For example going into forests that are being logged, are they being sustainably logged? Is there such a thing as sustainable logging of Amazonian forests? And then eventually we go more into the um, what you might consider a natural environment uh, such as the, an ecological reserve and we're trying to understand and get a practical experience of the methods um, that can be used to assess biodiversity. So here in the reserve we, we caught birds, we looked for caiman at night and it was a chance to really start to identify species and do stuff we've never really done before. We also had the opportunity to have a, a transect walk with Edibar who taught Luke during his masters 
and he made us walk through the rainforest in a transect really quietly and like he encouraged us to listen out, look for footprints, start to identify species and try and see animals both above our head and on the ground. Oh, I can see him. Oh, he just ran up. And it was really exciting. We saw a jaguar footprint at one point, which to us, you know, could be any old footprint, but he identified that it was within two hours because of the amount of leaves that had fallen into the footprint. And it was incredible to see the skill he had. Um, I remember looking above the, on the canopy and seeing the monkeys swing. It's just completely different to what any experience I've ever had before. It was really incredible to kind of realise where you were and how lucky we were to be like so deep into the jungle, which is, yeah.